Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. As always, all today's stories are time marked down below. Let's hop into our first controversy, though, involving the Mythic Stream team led by Flom. Of course, you guys probably know the lineup itself. This past weekend, we actually had, during this week, the ESL Cologne Open Qualifiers for North America going on. And of course, Mythic was actually there and doing quite well. And apparently, during mid their best of three versus E United, E United, who actually went on to qualify for the closed qualifier, they placed top two. The team they actually won against via forfeit, which was Mythic, apparently they were forced to forfeit because ESL demanded they shut down their streams of the event. Now, if you guys have actually watched the event, I didn't actually catch it itself, but apparently, according to Flom and other people out there, it was actually Flom's personal stream with several thousand of viewers, and of course, ESL's Facebook stream of the event getting next to zero viewers. Actually, Don Hossie pointed out they were actually at zero viewers at one point in time, and so, of course, ESL found out about this. They went on to Team Mythic and demanded they shut down their streams, actually breaking one of their own rules. I'll show you guys the current rule book right now on screen, and of course, it does say if there is no contact made with the team beforehand, those, those matches are allowed to be played out and apparently uh, according to Flom himself the leader of the team Mythic who was actually at the open qualifier they had already played five matches up until then they won map one against E United and it was actually mid best of three versus E United after they won map one they were demanded by ESL to shut down their streams or they would be forced to forfeit the matches now of course they refused good for them at least, and uh, it cost them the event. They were actually forced to forfeit. E United went on to place top two, and they actually made the closed qualifier for ESL Cologne. So because of this, of course, a big uproar out there. ESL, first of all, they sell out the Facebook. There's a lot of controversy there. I think we've noticed a, a severe drop-off of way more than what we thought for viewers over there at ESL. I know it's pretty inconvenient to actually watch a lot of those streams on Facebook, but now we have another instance of themselves breaking their own rule, going against their own rule book, and actually forcing these guys, these players out there who are getting a good amount of viewers for CSGO. And again, let's not even talk about that. The struggle CSGO has had getting any kind of viewers out there. We finally have a successful stream of someone actually streaming an open qualifier on their own platform. ESL demands to shut them down or they force to forfeit, breaking their rules, and the team then forfeits and lose it. They, they lose their chance for the future closed qualifier. So just an overall, just a disappointing situation to be in. Actually kind of funny though, Face It, they were actually the same team. Mythic was actually playing Face It matches just yesterday, and the Face It admins took on this really quick to make a kind of a joke about it. And then, yeah, and let's Let's nade one now. Oh, the boss. oh my god, dude. Fucking oh. fuck off. <laughs> So at least they can be a little bit lighthearted about the situation. It is kind of funny that they, at least the team is playing it off very well, but at the same time, it should be taken note, guys, in the future. If you're an organizer like ESL, this kind of thing should not be happening. Don't go against your own rules. And if you guys have been watching my content for a long time, it was actually several, several months ago I talked about Motor2K and of course the fact he has no social media account. So I just need to remind you guys one final time here on the YouTube channel because so many people reach out to me about this, all these Twitter accounts, all these Facebook accounts, these, these fake Twitch accounts, trying to pull off these scams. There is one, though, that has become quite popular, over 37,000 followers on Twitter. I'm going to link his account down below, guys. It's a certified Motor2K scammer. If you guys do know the real Motor2K, he has no Twitter, has, I don't think, any social media out there, and this guy is clearly trying to scam. If you guys want to do me a please, a favor, go to the Twitter account down below and please report him for scamming. He has now developed, apparently, a new scam out there, and thanks to the viewer who actually reached out to me, and he, he attempted to do this scam just to show you guys exactly what it was. So, of course, here's his post on Twitter, and he's made several just like it, then he deletes it and reposts it itself. He's apparently trying to flash sell his whole entire inventory for ridiculous PayPal prices. Now, a lot of you guys know, usually with PayPal, if you pay a guy, you can actually charge back your amount. What this guy does is he actually gives you a business invoice, and of course, at the very bottom, you see that you cannot actually have chargebacks, no refunds possible, and of course, he does make you pay first, which you're willing to do because the the idea sounds so sounds so far, far, far-fetched. I mean, if you look at, the, of course, the re, the re screenshot on screen, he's offering you guys dragon lures, rubies, sapphires, emeralds for $150 to $200 a piece. So there's some really good deals out there, deals, and that's why younger people out there do fall for this. And unfortunately, they pay 150 bucks on PayPal and they never get it back. And I'm sure this guy's been doing it for quite some time now. Of course, he's still around though for some odd reason. So watch out, guys. Motor2K, obviously a scammer here. Please report the account down below and please watch out. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Now, also bouncing off that though, guys, we want to talk about device and of course his health updates. We've had many pros in the past few months kind of take illnesses, uh, but none, none like quite like device. If you guys remember, it was actually back towards the back half of 2017 where he was having some trouble at events. You actually, I think it was Zonic who had to fill in for him at an event as well. It might have been Oakland. I'm not really too sure at the memory wise, but he's actually been sick ever since then. And of course, that's several, several months ago and people thought he was going to be just just fine in time for the major. He was. He suffered through it. But according to his newest post, guys, he's trying to update us on why he missed his recent signing session with the Strauss. Of course, no big deal. I'm sure everyone's going to forgive him for that. And it does make sense. Apparently having some really tough times with very severe acid reflux and apparently 
he's nauseous and going through stomach pains up to 90% of the day. So apparently he has not gotten better whatsoever in the past seven to eight months, which is kind of extraordinary. And of course he goes on to state as well, he does not think he's going to get better if he continues to play competitive CSGO, or at least that's what it made it sound like. So who knows the future of device right now? The guy seems to be struggling through it every single day. Who knows if he's gonna stick with it for the future entirely of CSGO. Of course, he's one of the better pro players out there and I'm sure he'll suffer through it. But honestly, if he's not gonna get better while playing CSGO eight to 12 hours a day and all the travel time, who knows if he's gonna need to take a break in the future. And also Heroic announced, I guess some big changes over there as well. Rubino apparently had some kind of eye injury as well. He'll be out for a couple weeks. So that's kind of a large stint for, of course, Heroic newly announcing their coach. Peacemaker is now gone. They're of course gonna have Madi continue as a player and a coach over there. And they do have two stand-in players on top of that. So Freiburg being one of them and Kroman being another. Uh, currently Heroic, a roster who kind of bloomed up the past few months and now kind of struck by some illness there with Rubino being out for at least two to three weeks. They'll have a couple stand-in players and of course a new, not a new player, but a player trying to be a new coach as well. We'll see how Heroic does in the future, guys, but they've announced that and their new roster on screen for all of you. Luckily, though, they do have the best young Nico in the game right now. And very last in today's episode of CSK News, I do want to announce very quickly, guys, I do actually graduate today officially, so I will be staying in the apartment for two more days. I'm probably going to have no video tomorrow. I'm going to save a bunch of news stories for Sunday, so I have one last weekend recap here in the apartment, maybe a little emotional episode. Who knows what's going to happen? So I'll see you guys again Sunday, and thank you all for the great support. Who knows what the future does hold, but very shortly here as well, our last CSGO news story does involve Tempo Storm, the team out there who has now had three to four full new rosters, not just roster changes in the past 12 months, but three to four brand new rosters. Of course, they announced their European roster. That was with Limpone, JW's little brother. They announced their Brazilian roster. That fell through as well. All within a four to six months, both those rosters fell apart, and they had the roster before that as well. And now announcing a brand new European roster, which will be HS's new team. That's a former Optic member who promised himself he would make his own team. Also, Fox, Lowell, uh, other players on there as well. And on, on top of that as well, their fifth member though, I want to talk about him as well. And that is actually very much of a surprise. His name is Soker. He comes from Kick Esports. If you guys remember Kick Esports, actually formerly a Portuguese organization. They used to have a full Portuguese roster, but now they're actually shifting towards a Ukrainian roster. So a quick side news story. If you guys remember Starx, he came back from, of course, coaching Navi. He then coached Team Spirit, then played for Team Spirit. He is now actually reactive in CSGO player base, and he's actually joined Kick Esports. And once he's joined there, Soker left, and now Soker's a part of this new HS team. And of course, we have HS, we have Fox, Innocent, and Lowell, and the real surprise member. I feel like there's a lot of new rosters out there this year that we've seen where the fifth member is always a big surprise. I think the, the last one we saw was Optic Gaming. They had that really solid core roster, and their fifth member, their fifth selection was Gade out of nowhere. So uh, kind of a, a weird thing. We, we saw Config and Cajun, Shazam, and Stannis. It kind of made it made sense, the, t the two duos there, and their fifth member was Gade. In this kind of similar situation, guys, we have a, a similarly consistent team here with some, some guys who have been in top tier CS, but he's going to be the big basis for how this future team goes. So brand new roster out there guys Starks has returned to competitive CSGO and of course we have a brand new Tempo Storm roster will they last though more than four to six months I'm I'm weary for the future of them so as, as always guys hope you all enjoyed this episode of CSGO News if you guys did please leave a like or comment down below I will see you guys all Sunday with a weekend recap and until then remember I like you and uh goodbye